Hey everyone, welcome back to the Practical Prospecting Podcast. Uh, today I'm here with Zach Wright. He's the co-founder and CRO over at Sift. Zach, how's it going? Welcome to the show, man. It's going good, Jed. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, for sure. So I want to start uh, this podcast because I met you about a month ago um, and, I, and I'm interested about your story. And so I want to start it off by kind of asking, um, you know, you started Sift, it looks like a little over two years ago. Can you talk to me about that process of how you went from you know, being at Oracle for several years to then jumping in and building this full time. Don't tell me, talk to me about kind of that process and why you saw uh, such an opportunity building Sift. Yeah. And I th- like just so, so uh, happy to be on here by the way. Um, but I just, I had nine years sales experience. I just felt like there were so many gaps in the market uh, from a, a sales perspective on value selling and territory management. Today, value selling, it just doesn't seem possible at scale. There mm-hmm. are like, like MailShake, you guys have a, a great tool to, and platform to create your sequences, but there's a lot of manual processes that happen behind the scenes before that everything is uh, started. So thinking like, oh, I, I want to figure out which accounts I want to focus on, which contacts are, that, are those associated to, uh, what value sequences should I create? A lot of those are siloed across many different data applications as well as manual processes. Some people even keep track of their territory in an Excel spreadsheet. So that's how you know how bad it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I wanted to take on a lot of those uh, concepts and, and manual processes and put it into a single experience and then integrate with the, the big engagement platforms like MailShake, like Outreach, like SalesLoft, you name it, right? So um, kind of create a, a possible way to value sell. Yeah. And for the audience that maybe isn't like super familiar, and, and I feel like there's different definitions and meanings behind the, the phrase value selling. Can you tell tell us like what value selling means to you? Like what's the definition in your opinion? Yeah, I, I think of it as approaching a prospect with a perspective and you can't pr- approach them with a perspective and, and personalize your outreach unless you know their business. And to know their business, you have to do a ton of research. Uh, it could be across like someone's 10K or their job boards or um, big lo- like low hanging fruit that you miss just because a seller might have hundreds of accounts. Yeah. So what we wanted to do was use generative AI to identify challenges or problems customers are facing that's relevant to what you're selling cross-reference that with your solution and, and pick out the contextually relevant value statement that uh, is appropriate for the problems that we surfaced. Um, so if we're, if we're, and especially our, our junior sellers, uh, mm-hmm. you think going back to COVID, there's a lot of people that miss that first foundational sales years, right? Like in the office, you're, you're, uh, you're bloodying your nose a little bit, uh, yeah. cold calling. You're, you're on the floor with everybody. That didn't happen for a whole generation of sellers, it feels like, with this hybrid environment. You're kind of off working remote, so it's tough to get that good foundation. But if we, can, if we can enable our more junior sellers and everybody to identify challenges and your, appropriate, and your associated values and approach these prospects with a perspective on how you think you can help solve some of these challenges. It makes that first discovery meeting a little bit less 20 questiony and more like, Hey, I have an idea of what you guys are going through. This is how I think we could help solve some of those. Now let's, let's do more of a collaborative exercise on what I got right, what I got wrong, uh, and draft a value hypothesis together. Then it's more of like a, it's like a me and you versus the problem versus a, a seller buyer seller tug of war, you know? Yeah, I like what you're saying because I remember being a brand new sales rep and like kind of the way I evolved is in the beginning, I was like, okay, I was told from my manager, these are the people we prospect, you know, these are the personas, these are the main problems. I'll just start cold calling and emailing, talking about the generic problem you solve, right? And that's, you know, you might get, if you blast out a bunch of emails, you might get a couple of meetings from that, but it's not very scalable. And then I started shifting into thinking like, okay, why are people buying our software at the time this company was PandaDoc? So it's an e-signature software. So I was yeah, trying to figure out, a like, customer. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> um, so I was trying to figure out like, why are people buying? And then I started figuring out, okay, there's some identifiers I can find here. Like their sales team is growing or they're hiring or somebody just changed jobs and things of that nature. Those are some of the basic ones we think of when we, when we think of like buying signals, for example. And so then my process got a lot more, uh, I would say intentional. 
And so I would get a list of accounts. I would look for these buying signals, and then I, would, I would write emails based on those buying signals I found. The issue was that still took a lot of time, and it was hard to scale that. And so it sounds like you're kind of automating some of that process, right? Yeah, yeah. We're going out and we're scraping uh, the the key indicators or triggers and keywords that you care about, uh, looking at uh, specific things like Google News or job postings. Um, you'd be so surprised. Like people really overlook the job posting side of the house. Yeah, I found a ton of pipeline in my career by looking at a job posting because it says a lot about where they're hiring strategically from a leadership perspective. Yeah. Do they mention your competitors, your concepts, your ecosystem partners? Maybe they maybe they say who it reports to, and that's certainly an influencer, a decision maker of what they say in the job post or. Uh, maybe they have a code, like a project code name. Well, yeah. in my sequence, I'm certainly going to subject that code name in my my subject, right? So um, it's all these little things that make you relevant and make the prospect want to take the meeting. But today, you just got to work your ass off um, <laughs> and stumble upon that little golden nugget of information. But what we're trying to do at SIFT is automate all of that research so that you can spend more time selling and reaching out to the right people and personalizing your outreach. So that's kind of the goal there. Yeah. Well, I remember a couple of years ago when I was first figuring this out, I ended up hiring my own Upworker to help find that research. And that gets like half of the problem done. They're never perfect. It can get expensive. But I'm curious, like now that I'm seeing software tools that are kind of automating some of this, um, can you tell me like, how does that exactly work in SIFT? Am I like uploading a list of accounts and then SIFT is going through and doing all the research and then it's, you know, spitting out, I guess, like here are the research points we found now go write emails, or is it actually writing the emails for you? Can you kind of walk me through the step-by-step -step process of using it? Yeah. Yeah. The on, the onboarding process, we'd either, uh, ingest your accounts from your CRM or just through like an upload process. Um, then an admin would set up, okay, these are the ideal industries that we care about. These are the trigger events that we care about from like Maybe that's like press release worthy events like a new CFO or an acquisition or funding or an IPO or a data breach or layoffs. All those could be trigger events, right? Yeah. And then keywords, we look at job postings um, and you tell us, hey, when we find these things, how important are they? And then we're going out and looking every day and reprioritizing your accounts. Um, then we look at what problems do you guys solve and how do you view events? And we ingest your marketing so that when we identify the challenges, we apply the appropriate marketing to be contextually relevant to solve that problem. And then we are using our own formatting to generate sequences. And then we can pipe those sequences and associated contacts um, to your engagement tool of choice. So that's kind of the, the approach that we're doing. Okay, so all the rep has to do then is go into their sequence tool and just start sending out the emails, maybe make some tweaks. But it sounds like everything is pretty much done for them for the most part. Yeah, yeah. And we uh, like we can either create your sequences for you that are value-based based off of the challenges that we found, or we can, uh, we can look at your existing sequences and use SIFT more as, okay, I'm going to focus on these accounts and these contacts, and here's why. But then some some companies they like lock down their sequences, so like yeah. maybe it's like marketing only. So like there we just need a glimpse into okay what sequences are already there and apply the right contacts to those sequences. So you can see like I'm calling it sales governance. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are calling it a lot of different things, but uh, like the approach here is to create many micro campaigns because that is going to be infinitely more effective. Yeah. than one spray and pray message that's just going out to the world and sounding exactly like your hundred competitors or whoever else is reaching out to your, your uh, personas. So um, we got it. The only way to perceive be uh, valuable is, uh, is to be different, right? So yeah. we got to personalize and we got to stand out from the pack. And th the way that we do that is try to identify personalized challenges in our associated value statements. Yeah, no, that's, that's super interesting. One thing I'm curious about too with you and your team, when you're going to the market, do you find that they're relatively like receptive to this? Or are most people like doing value selling in some way or another, but just doing it inefficiently? Or are you finding that you have to like get people to move off of this spray and pray method and understand the value of doing what you're talking about, more personalized value selling? 
Yeah, well, we're we're not a engagement tool like Mailshake or, or Outreach or Salesloft, so like they wouldn't be getting off of anything like that. It's more of a culture change right. um, to be looking more at okay, how do we how do we identify that a personalized amount of outreach to less individuals is going to be and yield better results than spray and pray my message across everybody. So that's kind of a culture change. Yeah. Um, and then like open to automation. And we, we do have a lot of the, the same, uh, like there is cost consolidation opportunities because like there's a ton of data providers that are just like kind of giving contact data and firmographics and all of that. We've brought that in through a partnership with one of the big data providers, mm. um, which cool. is like, so we're kind of bringing all of that territory planning and value selling creation into one experience. And if someone's open to that, um, that's certainly a great fit. Nice. Yeah. And one thing I want to get your thoughts on as a, as a founder in, in, you know, some of the AI space is, uh, you know, everything you're talking about is like probably more than half of what my job was as an SCR. So yeah. all that time removed from my job as an STR now in 2023, um, you know, that, that means two things. Either you're way more efficient or there's less need for as many SDRs as there was before or sales reps. So just want to get your perspective. How do you think like tools like yours? And by the way, I'm all for it. Like, I think we should just get more efficient. And the way I see AI is like it's an assistant to help you make do your job better and focus on more creative activities. But how do you see like, I guess, AI changing the landscape of sales? Do you think? Yeah, I guess, what is your perspective on that? I know it's kind of a common question, but how do you see AI and tools like this just, just changing the landscape of sales and sales reps? Yeah, and like I get this question all the time. And like the, the heart of the question is, like, is it going to get rid of SDRs or inside sales? And I think the answer is no. Yeah. Um, SDRs are the future of our sales organization. So we have to be able to develop, like it's in the title is development, yeah. right? Like we're developing the next generation of sales leaders. That being said, in a lot of these tech companies, we got to do more with less with all these layoffs. Yep. And AI is very much bringing the point forward that there's a ton of inefficiencies with how sales development, sales, sales operations and marketing, or what I call the revenue team, how mm -hmm. they all work together. There's a ton of inefficiencies. I, I remember working at very large organizations. So the problem is amplified big time. Yeah. Um, but sometimes sales development and sales, they kind of like hate each other yeah. and it doesn't make sense to me because they have a common goal of finding new business and closing that business. The problem is these teams have been so misaligned, um, under different leaders, under different direction. Um, so what we're trying to do is, is automate a lot of the, and remove a lot of those barriers to collaboration. So. Outside of everything we talked about, we've got an area called workspaces to try to build, like have an area to create collaborative uh, lists together as a team so our sellers can lead our sales development reps um, versus like, oh, I'm gonna send you my Excel spreadsheet and let's worry yeah. about version control and all this stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, I know there's like a lot of niche tools that also solve that problem, but we're trying to create this single experience for territory planning and that, that's certainly a big part of it. Um, so I think, yeah, we, we've got to do more with less, but enabling these, these sellers to say the right things and be contextually relevant is a great start. Yeah. Well, one thing I'm curious about is where do you see, um, like, I guess the future of SIFT and like, are there any other potential areas for automation that you could see it doing, whether it's SIFT or other tools, like are there, I personally don't think anyone's going to be able to automate cold calls, for example. Like I can't see, a robot cold calling somebody. I hope we don't get to that point. But are there any areas of like, let's say the sales reps day to day that you feel like there's more potential to automate, whether that's with SIFT or some other tool? Yeah. And like we're, what we're trying to create is this, this segment of the market called value matching. Cause like nice. what, what happens, what happens if email and cold call is no longer in favor, right? Like yeah. we've got to find a way to value match companies. So like we're, we're certainly exploring these new types of uh, engagements and doing very cool things to, to identify where is there a value match, both for the, the buyer, but all, like the seller, but also the buyer, yeah. um, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, like in the, in the short term, we're just doubling down on 
hey, we, we want to have an integrated ecosystem uh, to all the big players out there. Uh, we want to have the highest quality output with generative AI because like everybody is saying that they use generative AI, but yeah. really you got to judge it based off of the results and what type of value messaging they're creating. And I think it's, it's not like exactly, oh, it's because it is generative AI based, but it's more like we are following a certain structure that's a best practice and not just asking ChatGBT write me an email, right? Because yeah. we know we know that can like a lot of vendors are doing that, which checks the chat like the generative AI box, but it's it's making things up. It's called like hallucinating or drifting away from like mm -hmm. where you're actually trying to uh, be, and it, it's obvious that it's a it's generated by by ChatGBT. So it's like. How do we how do we automate a lot of these things while still sounding authentic? Because if you are finding the right challenges in, in your associated answer and associated value statements, um, you can certainly build something real and authentic. It's just kind of like automating a lot of the busy work to get you to that point. Yeah, I agree. Like the way I we just did a podcast with a guy. I don't know if you're familiar with him, uh, Jordan Crawford. He's got really good tips on using AI in your sales process and ChatGPT. But he gave us really good insights into how to use ChatGPT and generative AI. And a lot of it comes down to like giving it context, but also like doing the manual work of finding a message that works in the beginning. So like if you haven't found a way to, if you haven't figured out how to write a cold email to a specific target market that converts some percentage of the time, then you're probably not ready to use generative AI because you haven't even figured out like what sort of works to begin with. And then, you mm -hmm. know, start using, gen, you know, ChatGPT generative AI to, scale that message by giving it context around your business and like the problems you solved and things of that nature and just kind of amplify what you've already started. So that was a really good podcast that we did. But um, another question I want to ask you about is, you know, you've mentioned different creative prospecting plays or ways to find buying signals, buying triggers. And one of them was job postings. Do you have any other ones that you've used throughout your sales career that customers use at SIFT that are like a good place to go find information on a prospect or just creative prospecting plays in general? Yeah, well, like just identifying key events at scale is a very difficult thing. Yeah. Right? Like, like uh, I, oh, I'm, I'm not going to go spend time reading this 10K for all of my 100 public prospects in my, in my yeah. territory, right? Like do that four times a year quarterly. That's, that's 410 Ks. That's, yeah. that's pretty brutal, yeah. right? Or uh, like tracking all of these little things. Like if I'm a security company and I like, how am I going to find someone had a, a data breach or a DDoS attack or whatever it might be? So like really identifying what are those symptoms of problems that you can solve and then let something like SIFT aggregate that and organize it and make it really easy to uh, keep, keep track of that low hanging fruit. I'm like outside of job postings, I feel like that's another really big one. And it gives you a good talking point like, hey, yeah. I, I love to start uh, cold emails. The very first line is I observed or I saw and then X event, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, this guy, like he at least is, is looking at the uh, thing that is happening. Then yeah. I like to follow it up with what challenges are, are typically associated with that event through my lens and what solution, like what, uh, what's the value my company could offer and a call to action. So very simple outreach that's personalized that's not uh if i i say like if it's a if it's a two thumb scroll because most people are looking yeah. at their email on a phone it's way too long right so it's it's kind of uh it's figuring out the right way to personalize and then the right way to format it so that people will actually read your messages yeah yeah and i have an iphone mini so if you're sending emails to me you gotta <laughs> make them extra short yeah, yeah. We need we need four single lines for Jed. That's yeah, exactly. A, that's a good note if anyone's prospecting out there to Jed. Yeah. Um, no, I want to recap what you last said there, uh, which was because I think that's the perfect way to write emails is your opening line that preview text should be the context or whatever you observed. Why are you reaching out? It also increases your open rates because they're seeing that in the preview text before they even open the email. Bingo. The second line is, you know, what what sort of challenges, you know, you kind of can come to the conclusion of based on that event. And then, like you said, solution, the call to action. So that's like a perfect three or four sentence way to write cold emails. Um, but Zach, I this was really good. I think you shared a lot of interesting stuff. I think for anybody listening, 
definitely take a look at Sift. I think there's some really cool stuff, basically everything we've been talking about. But um, anything else you want to leave the audience with or, or, or mention before we jump off? Yeah, if you want to find us, we're at siftai.com, sift with a Y, kind of like uh, you're, yeah. sifting, you're sifting through sand for the gold. So that's kind of yes. what inspired the name. Um, but we thought, uh, we thought you definitely had to spell it like a, a cool, innovative tech company. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's, there's the reason why it's with a Y. <laughs> exactly. Cool, man. Well, thanks for joining the show and, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Chad.